Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. I'm Natalia Moczulska and this is the news. The Russians maintain a fleet of spy ships in the North Sea. Such conclusions were reached by Nordic journalists. They determined that the Kremlin's agencies are focused on finding targets for a potential attack. Is the security of the Baltic pipe gas pipeline at risk due to the Russian Federation's intelligence activities? According to Danish journalists, the fleet of Russian spy ships numbers at least 50 vessels. Intelligence activities have been going on for several years, and the vessels are camouflaged as fishing boats civilian ships or research vessels. For the Polish services, this topic is not new, and this much I can say. We know what kind of country we are dealing with. We know what Russia is capable of, so we do not rule out possible provocations at sea, just as it is, for example, in the airspace. Russian vessels have been observed in areas of the North Sea and Baltic Sea. The Danish government has published a report containing more than 100 photographs confirming the presence of Russians near the Danish coast. The footage was taken in September last year, at the same time as the explosions on the Nord Stream 1 and 2 pipelines. Our critical infrastructure, in particular the gas port and Baltic pipe, must be looked at with due attention. This is the nervous system of the Polish economy and seeing what happened with Nord Stream 1 and Nord Stream 2. We have to do everything to exclude the occurrence of such a situation on Polish infrastructure and all Polish services are doing their best to guard this infrastructure. According to journalists from Denmark, Sweden, Norway and Finland. The Russians are keeping an eye on gas and oil production areas, gas and oil pipeline lines, or NATO military exercise zones. Critical infrastructure elements, firstly related to the transmission of these energy resources and gas. Ships transporting from Poland or bringing goods to Poland are already under strict control and supervision of Polish services. On April 6th, a record amount of gas was sent to Poland via the Baltic pipe. It was 20 million cubic meters of gas. Baltic pipe is the Baltic pipe is currently crucial to our energy security, specifically gas security, because we purchase and import roughly half of the gas consumed in Poland through this pipeline. In this context, statements by the opposition deputies against strengthening our country's border security are surprising. Citizens Coalition MEP Janina Ochojska said on Radio Z that the wall on the Polish-Belarusian border should be dismantled. First, it was contested by the opposition. Then, after all, Donald Tusk himself said that this wall would never be built in his life. And recently, it turned out that he is said to be an avid supporter of it. And now it turns out again that Mrs. Janina Ochojska says that it should be removed. And I remind you that she is in the same party as Mr. Donald Tusk. This shows how the Polish opposition has no political direction, how much it wavers between its announcements. Baltic Pipe's target capacity is comparable to the amount of gas Poland receives under its long-standing contract with Gazprom, which has expired in December 2022. Its maximum capacity is capable of transporting 10 billion cubic meters of gas per year. Transmission of natural gas to Poland via this pipeline began on October 1st last year. Its expected lifetime is 50 years. All members of the alliance agree that Ukraine should become a member of NATO, NATO Chief Jens Stoltenberg said in Rammstein, Germany, where another meeting is being held at the level of defense ministers of some 40 countries that are helping arm Ukraine to repel Russian aggression. The meeting is attended by, among others, Pentagon Chief Lloyd Austin and Polish Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of National Defense, Mariusz Błaszczak. In 14 months of war, the Rammstein contact group of more than 40 countries around the world has already met 11 times. Today's talks focus on Ukraine's current needs ahead of the counteroffensive announced for the coming days. The donated equipment is expected to have a measurable impact on the situation on the front. And countries continue to coordinate through the contact group on providing ammunition and maintenance for those tanks. And so this contact group also provided key air defense systems to protect Ukraine's skies and citizens and critical infrastructure. That includes Patriot systems from the United States and Germany and the Netherlands, SAMP-T from Italy and France.
General Mark Milley said NATO will remain united. The training of the Ukrainian army by the Poles, Americans and British, among others, also plays an important role. The Poles, first of all, played a very important role in building certain training standards with also, of course, a large participation of the Ukrainian instructors themselves, who knew exactly what they were about. And here the key thing was to create a certain outcome so that it was nevertheless an army that corresponded to both the spirit and logic of this war. A special memorandum was signed at the summit under which German Leopard tanks going to Ukraine will be serviced in Poland. Germany has been judged very differently when it comes to involvement or such nonverbal support given to the Russian Federation, so such voices are very much needed at the moment. They are also very necessary in the armed conflict and the situation of the arms industry in Poland. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg announced that all member states support Ukraine's accession to the alliance. I said in Kiev yesterday uh, that uh, Ukraine's uh, future is in the Euro-Atlantic uh, uh, family and all NATO allies have agreed that uh, Ukraine uh, will become uh, a NATO uh, member. Um, uh, but the main focus now is of course uh, on, uh, uh, on how to uh, ensure that Ukraine uh, prevails. Germany owes a debt to Russia because of the atrocities of World War II. However, German Defense Minister Boris Pistorius quickly cooled the emotions. Consequently, they are reacting the way they are reacting. Meanwhile, Ukraine is increasingly demanding concrete measures, which are expected to be discussed at the upcoming NATO summit in Vilnius. Ukraine has reached unprecedented levels of interoperability with NATO. We are de facto already a part of the alliance's security space. I I expressed my hope that this would expedite political decisions regarding our country's NATO integration. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has been officially invited to the North Atlantic Alliance Summit in Vilnius in July. European Union measures to help farmers affected by a glut of Ukrainian food imports are too little too late, the Polish Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki said earlier today, after the government approved $2.4 billion in aid for Polish agriculture. Central European countries are trying to negotiate a deal with Brussels on European Union-wide measures to help agriculture, after some of them unilaterally introduced import bans on Ukrainian food products. If I were to wait for the European Union to help us, firstly, I would simply keep waiting. And secondly, the aid that has been mentioned so far, first 19 million euros, then 26 million euros. Now there is talk of another 40 to 50 million euros. Ladies and gentlemen, the Minister for Agriculture, Robert Telus, has presented the scope of this help. What the European Union is offering us is too late, too little, a drop in the sea of what is needed. And given that we are a part of the European Union, we must ask them for permission for particular procedures. And well, in some cases, that permission takes too long. That's why I appeal to the European Commission to give permission as quickly as possible for subsidies to be made from our budget for fertilizer for farmers. Several Central European countries became transit routes for Ukrainian grain that could not be exported through the country's Black Sea ports due to Russia's invasion in February of 2022. Bottlenecks then trapped millions of tons of grains in countries bordering Ukraine, forcing local farmers to compete with an influx of cheap Ukrainian imports. The European Commission has offered 100 million euros of aid for Central European farmers, in addition to an earlier 56 million euro package. The European Commission has also said that it will take emergency preventive measures for wheat, maize, sunflower seeds and rapeseed. But the Central European states want this list to be widened to include products including honey and some meats. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Please stay tuned for Poland Daily Weather, Poland Daily Business and some of our other programs. But for me, it's have a wonderful weekend.